Here we are with chapter six of Jemima Small versus the Universe. It wasn't until the end of that first week back at school that I found out what the Benometer was really about. It was like this sleight of hand trick my granddad used to do when we were little. He was a famous magician called the Amazing Apollo. Well, famous in Clifton on Sea. He used to perform at the Palladium opposite the pier. His real name was Harry Small, but the amazing Harry Small didn't have the same ring to it. He'd show you his empty hands and then pull a coin out from behind your ear or even your toes if you were wearing flip-flops. I used to believe he'd really found the coin in there, but it was just a stupid trick. He had it hidden in his palm all along. It was the same thing with everyone at school getting weighed. It had nothing to do with predictions or formula or bananas or science. They just pretended it did and I was stupid to even fall for it. I walked into forum on Friday morning with Miki and Mr. Nelson Oh, with Miki and Mr. Nelson said, Jemima, quick word, please. I got this plunging feeling in my stomach, like when you look over the edge of the plank. Miki and I exchanged glances and then I walked over to Mr. Nelson's desk. He lowered his voice. Mrs. Savage would like you to go straight to the sports hall this morning. There's a special meeting she'd like you to attend. Meeting? I asked, scanning my brain for an idea about what it could be. It's nothing to worry about. You're not in any trouble, he said. You'd better hurry. And the way Mr. Nelson smiled at me, I figured it was about brainiacs. I thought maybe Mrs. Savage wanted to make sure I was taking the test, even though she'd said it was optional. Maybe she'd looked up our SAT results or spoken to Mrs. Lee or something. When I got to the sports hall, about 12 people were sitting on the floor. I recognized Harry and Heidi, the twins in my year from Miss Fraser's class. I did the reading challenge with them last year. I went over and sat down. Brandon Taylor, Dylan's older brother, was sitting near them. Brandon used to make fun of me at primary school too sometimes, although he'd never said anything to me since I started at Clifton. He looked up and smiled awkwardly. I looked away. I watched a few more people arrive and suddenly it clicked in my head. I knew why Mrs. Savage had sent me here and it had nothing to do with the stupid Brainiac's test ne next week. It all made perfect sense why we'd been measured and weighed on Monday, and why everyone sitting in the sports hall was wearing a blazer about the same size as mine. I felt stupid and sad and angry all at once, but I didn't say anything. I sat there on the cold floor, probably feeling the same as everyone else who'd figured it out. In total silence, with my fingers crossed, even though I didn't believe in crossing my fingers, wishing and wishing and wishing that I was wrong. Mrs. Savage kept a smile plastered on her face, but shifted around on her feet like she was uncomfortable. Maybe she felt bad about what she was going to say, or she had bunions. Thank you for coming, everyone. I've brought you here to tell you about a very special program of lessons that you'll be taking part in this academic year. Think of it as a special club. Suddenly, the doors at the back of the sports hall were flung open and a group of boys burst in. They stood staring at us for a moment as their laughter echoed off the walls. Close those doors and get to your form classes, Mrs. Savage's voice reverberated around the sports hall. We've got P.E. in here now, Miss, one of them replied. Mrs. Savage sighed and shook her head. Not yet. The bell for lessons hasn't even rung. I'm using the hall for this special club, so please leave. There was more laughing as they stumbled out. Then one of them shouted, Fat Club, just before the door slammed shut. Heidi whispered something to Harry and he nodded and then looked around. Mrs. Savage caught my eye for a second and then cleared her throat and moved her mouth into a smile so wide it looked like a Snapchat filter. The atmosphere felt dense, a bit like the atmosphere on Mars, but that's 95% carbon dioxide. This was 100% humiliation. And I could feel it tightening my chest. I knew for sure now why we'd been weighed and what Mrs. Savage meant by special club. This meeting was Clifton Academy's brand new fat club and it did not feel very special to be a member. The end of chapter six.